emerging from the depths, still loaded with ammunition that never found its target. It's just one of 19 cannons recovered from what's thought to be the wreck of British warship HMS Rose, which sank in Savannah Harbour, Georgia, 244 years ago. Recovery of the cannons was begun almost three years ago by the US Army Corps of Engineers as part of dredging works. Incredibly, the weapons were still loaded and there has followed a race against time to protect the artifacts after almost two and a half centuries underwater. If you take material out of the sea and you don't do anything to conserve it, it'll just, it'll deteriorate very quickly. Archaeologists from Chronicle Heritage, under contract to the US military, sent 17 of the cannons to a special facility in Texas, where work continues to conserve them. Texas A&M has a world-class conservation lab for such sites, and so through a competitive contracting process, they were selected to do the conservation for this project. There's not too many facilities out there that uh, have the equipment and the expertise that we do. Any material that comes off of an underwater archeological site or terrestrial site, uh, we can conserve here. So what we're doing is we're taking the cannon and we're putting them into a vat, filling the vat up with an electrolyte. In this case, it's uh, sodium hydroxide. And we're creating a circuit. So we're putting DC current into the cannon and then uh, what it does is it pushes the salts out of the metal. It takes a really long time, um, upwards of, it could be two years in some cases uh, to get all the salts out, but it's an effective way to get the salts out. There's no danger of the black powder deep inside exploding, but like opening a historic time capsule, the materials placed into the loaded cannon at the time the ship sank need removing to get at the cannonballs deep inside. When these cannons sank, uh, they were loaded and they still had a plug in the end of them. So these are still plugged up the way they were when they went down. Next, you need to pull out a lump of old ropes called the junk wad which sailors stuffed in to keep the powder dry. Then, if you're lucky, the cannonballs roll right out. One, sometimes even two. This is a six pound uh, cannonball. And there's another one right behind it, as per usual. Further down, another junk wad, and then, finally, something exceptionally rare, the remains of a bag of powder. Everything is carefully recorded and photographed. This is not something that survives very often, uh, so we got really lucky on this. This is there's not very many examples of this known. And so what we're doing is there between sheets of paper with blotting paper on top, so we can do a slow, controlled dry. Removing accumulated marine materials that have stuck to the cannon during its time in its watery grave is intense but rewarding work. It's a really crazy feeling because when you get a cannon that hasn't been worked on, there are like mud globs over it. There's a lot of like mollusks and biological activity. And so when we're scraping it with an air scribe or with a hammer and then you hit the surface, it's a crazy feeling because you're the first one to see the surface. And so we just keep doing that and it's, we have no idea what we're going to find. And that's kind of like the joy of it. There it is. Ooh, okay. Working on these cannons, it's kind of emotional because I am descendant. I mean, I'm a descendant from like people who fought in the Revolutionary War in the South. And to me, that's just crazy that I'm working on these cannons that they could have touched. It's just a whole experience, especially when you see the cannonballs and the junk wads roll out and you're the first one to hold them. It's starting to hiss. I remember when I was <laughs> the first one, John took the cannonballs out and I just didn't think about it. I took them and I was gonna weigh them. And then like walking to the scale, I had all this gunpowder dripping on my hands and I just stood there and my hands were shaking a little bit and I realized I'm the first one to hold these and weigh them on a scale. It, it's impossible to not be um, thrilled to be doing this kind of work. It's the ultimate behind the museum glass job, right? We're getting everything secure. So when it goes to the museum, everyone can go and see it and enjoy it. Um, but it's, it's a very satisfying feeling to know that you're the person that's helping preserve these for generations to come. It's, it's really cool. As physical conservation efforts go on, research into the wreck continues. Tom Sables, Forces News. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.